Okay. Uh, this lecture I presented last month in uh, Heder Abad about uh, novel uh, medical and endoscopic management of uh, esophageal and gastric gas. Uh, you know portal hypertension develops where there is resistance to portal blood flow and is aggravated by increased portal collateral blood flow. Resistance is mostly within the liver, as in cirrhosis, but can also be prehepatic, as portal vein thrombosis, or post-hepatic, as in Machari syndrome. We have two important uh, mechanisms, structural changes and dynamic changes. Structural, when there is fibrosis, regenerating nodules and vascular occlusion. Uh, dynamic, the hepatic stellate cells responsible for fibrosis and myofibroblasts and increased production of vasoconstrictors and decrease, reduce the release of vasodilators. So, collaterals are not enough to, de to decompress the portal uh, circulation because splenic vasodilatation occurs with increased portal flow and the collateral, collateral is high, uh, have higher resistance than that of the normal liver leading to inadequate portal vein decompression. The hepatic venous wedge pressure is a dynamic variable reflecting the hepatic sinusoidal pressure and therefore indirectly the portal pressure. Normally it is uh, 1 to 5 millimeter mercury If more than 10, it reflects significant portal hypertension. More than 20, it, 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 it identifies very severe bleeders unlikely to, to respond to therapy. Uh, currently, if you do fibro scan and you find the F, which is not more than 4 to 5, if the F fibrosis 19, and more, you expect very Sometimes, F reaches up to 75, by the way, for the scale. Uh, uh, schistosomiasis is the background of our liver problem, though it is now regressing. As you see, uh, uh, the ova in the liver and the uh, Uh, granulation tissue, uh, foreign body tissue reaction ending in the granuloma. Uh, schistosomiasis is an ancient disease. As you see, the mummies in uh, Egypt they found uh, schisto eggs, and the disease was called AAA. I don't know what the meaning of AAA, but we can uh, ask Zay uh, Hawad. So, In Egypt, in our Egyptian experience in uh, uh, infants and children and in adults, the background in infants and children is portal vein thrombosis due to umbilical sepsis, be careful, and also cirrhosis B and C. I have it scored uh, uh, infants aged uh, one to six months and I found huge versus resistance is very uh, reduced and the rates are very huge. And then uh, all of my colleagues can line up our reach. This is the uh, all of our studies prove that Osophageal and or gastric versus are the most common cause of hematemesis and the believer in our pediatric cases, 50% and we found this. Same, almost in others, 40 to 70% with our research. All of our uh, uh, researches prove that versus is number one cause of hematemesis and or believer. Uh, also, uh, virus C and virus B, both uh, B and C, and 
Here's to an uh, unknown causes of sorrow. These are different uh, stages of viruses. Uh, the burden of the disease. In cirrhotics, 5 to 15 percent of cases develop new viruses annually. One third of cases uh, with viruses, uh, they do bleed. One third of those who bleed die from the first bleeding episodes. So, the beautiful thing that I Iman Hamza, in acute bleeding, resuscitation is very important. And I always advise my students, number one in the management is IV cannula. IV cannula. To keep the vein open until you refer to uh, IC. So, and you give antibiotic and uh, the pharmacological therapy, octreotide, uh, terlipressin, and you continue this for three to five days after cessation of bleeding. Acute bleeding, uh, endoscopic therapy is a definitive treatment. Endoscopic variceal ligation within 12 hours is uh, preferred as initial treatment. Escuri therapy, of course, is not now uh, indicated unless you, you don't have only the steward therapy. As you see, by the way, this is a, a picture of Fuji, old Fuji video scope, 1989, and this is what a child. See how huge versus, and here we bend the ligation until complete cure of Viruses. This is how uh, you do uh, viruses. Of course, this lecture, all of you can present, I know, just to a refreshing. Okay? And here is how you vent like gates. You start at the sort of gastric junction and you go in a spiral way. You can bend the ligate up to 10 beds. Uh, 20 or 25 years ago, when we started bed ligation, we, we used to insert the scope and we do one bed and we get out and fire another bed until the body shooter started to appear. What you do if endoscopy fails? If you don't have failure, our uh, uh, failure rate is 10 to 20 percent. Failure of therapy is defined by the following. Fresh hematemesis or more than 100 milliliters of blood in the nasogastric tube uh, more than two hours. After the start of the specific treatment. Or development of hypovolemic shock or drop of hemoglobin to uh, uh, three grams or less. Every bleeding uh, means bleeding that occurs more than five days and less than six weeks. Later bleeding after six weeks. Uh, if endoscopy fails, you have to be ready with this. I know all of us, we don't like the sangestake and tube, but uh, sangestake and tube saved a lot of lives. And maybe some of you didn't see it or didn't use it, but most of our age, age after use, it's like a safe tube. It is ridiculous, but sometimes it's the only solution. Uh, that you, the stent, uh, the covered stent, uh, uh, we tried this stent with uh, Iman and Hamad uh, and our friend. Uh, uh, Reiner Hoffman from Austria. We did a study on 16 cases. It is helpful and they suffered a lot waiting uh, acute patients anytime, day or night, and insert the uh, stent 
it, it is not successful, but it needs. Uh, Laboratory is very expensive. Uh, uh, number two, if you uh, uh, you can inject and give it the treatment, you can cover the patient. But you have to be ready with alternatives if you fail uh, to do uh, endotherapy. This uh, complexion with uh, applied uh, covered stent and use stent, and here how to remove it. Well, also we have the tail, uh, uh, the tips, a transjugular intrahepatic port systemic shunt, which is contraindicated in uh, heart failure, uh, pulmonary hypertension, thoracasmic disease, and sepsis. Sometimes in HCC and portal lymph thrombosis, it uh, may cause encephalopathy and it may add uh, steroids. Uh, generally, we, we, it is used if you are planning to, to do liver transplantation. If uh, still, if uh, things fail, you can go to surgery. We always advise in acute GI bleeding, you have to consult surgeon for the stethoscope with you hand in hand. It is not a must that he will uh, do surgery, but uh, uh, stimulate him with you. Different types of surgery, and uh, still the new hemospray and endoclot, the powder which becomes adhesive when it it uh, it comes into contact with the moisture. Uh, forming a stable mechanical barrier at the site of bleeding. Uh, it is well uh, used in acute bleeding peptic ulcer, erosive uh, conditions, but some are uh, trying to use it, like Jacques de Vier, and to study it uh, in esophageal beds. Again, the expensive nature of this uh, hinders it. Uh, these are the types of uh, viruses, uh, extension from the esophagus uh, and uh, solitary uh, gastric here, and uh, gale and uh, antral uh, erosion. And of course, you have the ectopic viruses in the duodenum, in the jejunum, and colon, etc. These are some different pictures of viruses. And for gastric viruses, we have some facts. Prevalence up to 30, 33%. Uh, incidence of bleeding, 25% in two years. Mortality is high. And risk factors, uh, size, child class, uh, presence of red signs, and the pressure more than 12 uh, millimeter milk. See how dreadful when they bleed. See the spurter? But expert endoscopist immediately stop this by uh, histoacryl the glue. This is some picture. Polymer, the histoacryl. And here, after one week, after three weeks, complete healing. And this is when the commercial glue released in the 60s. They show how it is sticky and strong. Well, uh, about glue, you have to use wide channel scopes and large bore needles. Three to four needles should be standby. Uh, use the bidon to flush the scope and needle, uh, uh, eye protection and avoid accessory suction no, uh, so you not close the channels. Practice. Strictly interversial injection. Uh, it solidify all in one session. You should, you should solidify the, the, the vein. I mean, after you inject, you put the needle, the, uh, yes, the needle with the uh, the needles inside, you, you just palpate to see is it firm, it's hard, it's still weak, you need one uh, cc more, etc. 
uh, not more uh, uh, than one to two, three milliliter per injection, uh, uh, not more than five ampoules and uh, three injection uh, per cycle session. Uh, sometimes we do a plain abdomen to see whether the uh, glue and the libidol. And still, we have alternatives like uh, Berto. Berto is balloon occluded retrograde occlusion. You can reach the gastrorenal vessel, transfemoral or transjugular, they are something else. And you inflate a balloon or pacify the uh, gastric varix by uh, any dye. Then inject ethanolamine oleate, uh, uh, keep balloon inflated for 28 uh, hours, and deflate after ensuring thrombosis of the gastric vein. Uh, uh, U.S. guided uh, obturation of the varices, uh, uh, direct access to feeding vessel, no uh, retroflexion, uh, no blocked view of gastric contents, intact gastric mucosa because you enter guided by the uh, endoscopic ultrasound, and uh, the guided uh, coil uh, is platinum, thrombogenic synthetic fibers, and additionally, act as a scaffold to uh, uh, the glue. This is how you use an endoscopic ultrasound. And this is, uh, you reach, uh, and this is how the result. A serious complication my uh, colleagues presented. This case was treated somewhere and came to our emergency in the Iman and uh, Dr. Iman Hamza found this is the stomach there is necrosis here of the wall then you will see the liver huge perforation and this is cirrhotic liver seen. Uh, she injected dye and showed you how very serious complication. We don't know what happened. Well, uh, uh, congestive gastropathy and the gave, and uh, we use uh, regularly the argon plasma coagulation or APC. Some uses. Uh, band ligation uh, and of course radical okay a patient with cirrhosis who survived uh, the first episode of acute the same bleeding should receive therapy to prevent the recurrence of the recent hemorrhage this is a secondary uh, prophylaxis non-selective beta blockers uh, uh, is uh, the medicine used but it is not used uh, uh, to prevent uh, uh, bleeding uh, in patients with cirrhosis who do not have varices. I mean, if patient has no varices, don't use non-selective beta blockers to prevent the appearance of varices. Huh? In patients who have compensated cirrhosis and no varices, on the initial upper endoscopy, it should be repeated in three years. But if there is decompensation, repeat uh, annually. Patient with cirrhosis and small varices, uh, you give non-selective beta blockers. If no criteria for increased risk of bleeding, uh, it can be used, although uh, their long-term benefit has not been established. Generally, uh, cirrhosis with small varices are not a problem. Uh, patient with cirrhosis and small varices, non-bleeding, not receiving beta blockers, repeat endoscopy in two years. If decompensated, you repeat annually. In patient with small varices, not receiving beta blockers, follow-up endoscopy is not necessary. Small varices is not a problem. Large varices you have to give either beta blockers and 
Isabella Torino non ha detto. Mr. Blocker, or the share legation, of mission. Okay, combination of uh, non-selected beta blockers plus uh, the share ligation is the best. And uh, a new drug is Cabinilol, a potent beta blocker with mild anti-alpha-1 adrenergic activity. It is better than uh, non-selective. And if patients are uh, uh, candidate for transplantation, go ahead. And thank you very much. And this is a book. We will give it to the 10, uh, uh, the best 10 in the body. Ahmed O'Fail, the teacher's body. I'm actually voting the system. Huh? Okay. Uh, well, uh, the best thing I have to ask a good human need. Okay? Thank you very much.